Okay, so today uh, we will discuss a new topic and that is uh, the theory of elasticity and fluid mechanics. So normally when you think of uh, elasticity, you think of a rubber band most of the time and uh, when you think of fluid mechanics, you think of uh, you know flow of liquids in a pipe for example. So you might be wondering why I have clubbed them together and uh, discussing both in the same chapter. So the reason is, uh, there is a very good reason for that and that is that uh, uh, both have the same uh, mathematical and conceptual underpinnings. So they all come from the idea of stress and strain and how these bodies respond to uh, uh, the applied stresses. So basically the subject matter of elastic bodies and elasticity and fluid mechanics both involve understanding how objects uh, deform when uh, uh, stresses or forces are applied. So I am going to read off this uh, description uh, in the introductory uh, chapter here. So this chapter deals with the description of elastic bodies. So elasticity is a phenomenon wherein a body responds to external forces uh, not only by accelerating as a rigid body would have done but by deforming. So in other words it changes its shape or size or both. So normally a rigid body, uh, well a rigid body by definition will not change its shape or size but it will simply accelerate if you apply a force. But whereas elastic bodies, uh, they also change their shape and size. Elasticity and plasticity are similar but different in the sense that plastic deformation is one which is not uh, reversible. In other words, if you, a plastic object will remain deformed even after you remove the forces uh, that you have applied which causes the deformation. So we will of course not be studying plasticity in this uh, course. So we are studying elasticity theory and fluid mechanics. Okay, so, um, so a fluid is an elastic material that flows. So this means that uh, the material will suffer acceleration when you apply shear stresses. So these shear stresses are basically anisotropic stresses. So I will have to precisely define what stress is, it is a kind of force. So which I am going to do now. So that is basically the content of this uh, chapter. So it is a description of uh, elastic bodies and uh, fluids and how they respond to various forces that are acting on them. Okay, so in order for us to proceed with the subject, we have to define the core concepts of the subject and the core concepts of the subject are basically stress and strain. Okay. So uh, stress is nothing but uh, the force per unit area acting at some point on a chosen surface. So you just imagine a surface, so you have to consider an imaginary surface, okay. So it is just there in your mind. So just uh, imagine that there is some surface in some deformable body. Then you choose a point on the surface and you ask yourself what are the forces acting on that uh, point. Okay, so there, so there'll be force a vector. A vector has three components because we are working in three dimensions, and those three components we conveniently choose to be uh, perpendicular to that imagined surface that we have considered, and the uh, two other directions which are parallel to the uh, surface. That means that there is a tangent plane to the surface at that point you are interested in, and that tangent plane will have. Uh, two independent direction because it is a two dimensional tangent plane and the normal to the surface is one specific direction. So a force acting at that point is basically has three components because we are working in three dimensions and one component is perpendicular to the surface and that is called normal stress and the forces that are parallel to the surface they are called shear stresses. So that is basically the point. So an elastic body will now decide to uh, either deform or, or accelerate or both depending upon what the situation is, okay. So if it is a fluid, it will typically accelerate, uh, it will always accelerate when shear stresses are applied uh, but for uh, elastic solid, it will deform, okay. So that is the basic idea of a stress. 
A strain, a strain is basically uh, defined as the amount of deformation the body undergoes relative to uh, the displacement that you have considered. So that means, uh, so I will precisely define what that is uh, subsequently. Okay. So now, uh, you know, because uh, you see the forces of stress clearly depend upon the imagined surface that you have considered. So, it is it's not like you know if you have a point particle, uh, there is just a force acting on that. But then here within a solid, uh, with an elastic uh, solid, you can actually have different forces acting at the same point depending upon which surface you have in mind that is passing through that point. So, you can have different surfaces uh, passing through that point and these different surfaces have uh, normals in different directions and you have uh, these uh, stresses which are parallel to the normal. So, in other words, those are the normal stresses they can point in different directions depending on the surface you have in mind. So, let me uh, explain to you this particular formula. So, basically it makes perfect sense to then talk of uh, a matrix called sigma of x, x. So, this, so where x is some point inside the, inside the elastic body. So, this n hat is normal to the imagined surface. So, if you have an elastic body here, okay. So, what you do is uh, you imagine uh, so, you imagine a point called x inside it and you imagine some surface. Okay, so, uh, so, let me consider this to be x. So, this is your imagined surface. So, this surface can be in any direction. So, that means this there is a normal to this surface called n hat. So, now you can uh, you can have a force acting uh, on on the surface which is basically, so the force acting on the surface whose unit normal is, is basically this. So, this is, the, this is how you determine uh, the force acting on the surface. Okay. So, there is a unit normal and uh, so you see you can, you can have these, these are the types of forces. So, this is, uh, this is the normal stress that we are considering. So, the force acting normal to the surface would be given by this. So, if, if you imagine a closed surface inside the, inside the solid, then you can have many of these normal forces acting and that will be the, the total normal force acting on the surface can be calculated that way. So, if you calculate the total normal force acting on the surface, it will be related to, so this is called the stress, uh, stress tensor. Okay, so, stress tensor basically tells you uh, what the so the, so this is basically the force per unit area so this is a matrix the 2 by 2 matrix so it has components like sigma xx sigma xy uh, sigma xz sigma y uh, yx yy yz like that so it has uh, nine components and uh, you see this is a column matrix a unit vector so if you multiply these two you get another vector so basically, this is force per unit area acting uh, parallel to n hat. So that means perpendicular to the surface. So now, if you integrate over all the uh, so this force per unit area at some point, you integrate over all the uh, small small patches around those uh, points, say uh, around a closed surface inside the material. Then what you get is basically the net. Uh, uh, normal stress acting on that imagined surface, okay, within uh, imagined closed surface within the deformable body. So, now the point is that clearly uh, if the uh, deformable body uh, just uh, it does not accelerate, so a usual elastic solid will not accelerate when a net force is applied, rather it will simply deform. So, basically therefore, there must be some kind of a body force uh, within the solid that compensates uh, for this uh, applied stress, otherwise it will uh, ac accelerate. So, if you do not want it to accelerate, there has to be 
some other force compensating for this uh, stress. Okay, so this normal stress around uh, that is applied to this closed surface and that uh, body force is basically force per unit volume which, uh, which we think of as Fb. So, now you integrate uh, this force per unit volume over the entire volume of that closed surface and then uh, so that will be the net force acting due to the body forces. So, that could be say the weight of the so typically it is the weight of the uh, stuff or the material inside that imagined closed surface. So, that would constitute a body force because that would uh, amount to you know force per unit volume there. So, if you integrate over the volume you get uh, basically a net force and that force has to uh, cancel out the force due to the stress. So, when these two cancel out then you can be sure that the uh, imagined material, so the imagined surface containing this uh, elastic material will not accelerate rather it will deform. So, uh, so it is important that these two fo forces perfectly balance out each other. So, which is why we have to demand that the body force within the imagined surface should be minus F stress. So, F stress is the net stress acting on the surface of the, the normal stress acting on the surface of the uh, this imagined closed surface that we are thinking of. Okay, so, uh, so now you see you can use uh, your well known Gauss's theorem which says that you can always write the surface integral of the normal component as the volume integral of the divergence which is very familiar, this is a very familiar uh, theme in electromagnetic theory which I am sure many of you have encountered before. And so, we are going to use that, so it is of course nothing to do with physics, it is just a simple matter in calculus. Okay. So, we simply use this Gauss's theorem which relates these two and then we combine uh, this relation which is F stress and this relation. So, when you do that you get this, this result that is uh, the volume integral of divergence of sigma which is still a vector because remember that sigma is a 3 by 3 matrix and you dot product it with a vector you will get another vector which is 3 component and Fb is clearly a force per unit volume which is of course still a vector. So, now these two put together has to be 0 because this volume can be anything. So, it is completely general, so uh, the integrand itself has to be 0 because it is not any specific volume, it is any general volume. So, it is clear that uh, this integrand itself itself has to be 0. Okay, uh, so, the bottom line is this that if somebody tells you what the body forces acting are, so that is typically the case when you, you know what the material is, mass uh, density. And so, then you are talking about the body force due to the weight of the material, uh, then uh, clearly you know what Fb is or maybe somebody is applying some external pressure on the deformable body, like you are stretching a rubber band for example. If you are stretching a rubber band, you know what forces you are applying. So, those are the body forces and there will be uh, stresses because of the applied uh, body force there. So, bottom line is that uh, somebody tells you body forces you can solve for the stresses provided you also know the boundary condition. So, the, so somebody has to tell you the stresses acting on the boundary and the body force equation together with the known stresses acting on the boundary will uniquely determine the stress tensor of the body. Okay, so, that is the bottom line. So, because this is a first order, uh, first order differential equation because if you want to think of sigma as your unknown, this is a you know, divergence of sigma is something and so that is, so it is a first derivative, divergence is a first order derivative and there will be an, in, when you integrate you get integration constants uh, and those constants are determined by 4.5 which is basically the boundary conditions. Okay, so, you need those things and then th these two 4, 4.4 and 4.5 put together uniquely determine the stresses acting in the body. 
Okay, so, uh, so, so much for the stresses. So, you can see this diagram clearly tells you what I am talking about. For example, uh, say if I am looking at this surface. So, you see, uh, so this is my uh, x direction, right? So, this is my x direction and this is my z direction and uh, this is my uh, this is my y direction. So, you can see that sigma x x is perpendicular to the surface, right. So, this surface is basically the y z plane. So, this is the y z plane. So, sigma x x is perpendicular to the y z plane which would correspond to normal stress and sigma x z and sigma x y would be the shear stresses. So, they are within the plane. So, same with uh, all other. So, so, you see the surface dependent. So, you have to decide what surface you are talking about. Then you can determine what forces are acting. All right. So, now uh, the next uh, important notion or concept is basically strain. Strain uh, is basically the response to stress. So, that means strain is what uh, the elastic uh, body does when stresses are applied to it. So, uh, usually if you are a, have a rigid body, you apply something analogous to a stress which is basically a force. Uh, a rigid body will simply accelerate. It does not do anything other than that. It will simply accelerate. Accelerate means it could linearly accelerate or angularly accelerate. Uh, you know, it can spin around and does, it can do all sorts of things. But then it will certainly not uh, change its shape or size or whatever. But however, an elastic body uh, does exactly that. It, uh, so, if you apply forces to an elastic body, the elastic body changes shape and size. So, typically we do not want it to accelerate as a whole or spin around, rather we want it to change shape. So, that would be the uh, perfect kind of elastic object that so, it's, it would be the antithesis of a rigid body. A rigid body will simply not deform in any way, but it will accelerate either linearly or angularly. But a perfectly elastic body would do the exact opposite, that it will simply not accelerate in any way, but it will deform in whatever way you want it to deform. So, uh, so that deformation of an elastic body is described by a concept called strain. So, stress is what you apply, strain is the response. Okay, so, how do you describe uh, the response of an elastic object to stresses? To uh, describe that, we imagine a point x in the body. So, we have said that basically what, what the object does is or the body does is it deforms. So, what that means is that the point which was initially at x now shifts to a different location called x plus d. So, in other words, there was a point x in, in the deformable object. So, uh, apply stress. So, if you apply stress, uh, that point shifts to this location. And this D is the deformation, deformation of this point X, but it clearly depends. So, different points can deform differently and there is no requirement that all points should deform by the same amount. So, clearly it is a function of which point inside the material you are talking about. So, this displacement is basically given by, uh, so we use the symbol small letter u to describe the components of this displacement. So, uh, u subscript x corresponds to the displacement of this point x in the x direction, u subscript y describes the displacement of the point in the y direction and similarly z. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to describe something called the strain tensor. So, in other words, just like stress was a 3 by 3 matrix because see what was uh, stress, it was uh, uh, described by something called sigma, but sigma had components like sigma z z, 
sigma xz, sigma yz. So, what is sigma zz? It is basically the force acting per unit area at some point perpendicular to the yz uh, xy plane because it is sigma zz. So, it is parallel to the z axis. So, it is perpendicular to the y xy plane. So, the forces acting at that point perpendicular to the xy plane would would be sigma zz. So, similarly sigma xz would be perpendicular to the y axis. So, it will be parallel to the xy xz plane. Okay, so, uh, bottom line is that uh, it has uh, to be described by a matrix because the force acting depends upon the choice of the surface that you have in mind. So, as a result it is more than just a vector. So, it is a vector plus this choice of the surface that you have in mind. So, it becomes kind of vector in three different directions. So, it is therefore a 3 into 3 object, so which is a matrix or a tensor. So, similarly a strain also is a tensor for the same reason. You know a, a point can deform in the same direction in which you choose to move. So, if you shift your point from x to x plus dx, but do not shift y and z. So, the point uh, look wh what I mean by that is that you you have a point called x, y, z. You choose to uh, investigate uh, what is going on at the neighboring point. So, the neighboring point could be for example, x plus dx, but then y is still y and z is still z. So, now at that neighboring point, the uh, deformation of your original point can uh, be also in uh, in a different direction other than in the x direction. So, you can have this uh, u of x which is basically d dot x uh, hat right. So, this this can be a function of uh, x, y or z right. So, so if you are talking about this, so this is basically the normal strain. So, that means it is uh, the strain is in the same direction in which you are looking. So, if you decide to shift your point of consideration from x to x plus dx, if the, the original point deforms in that direction, it is called normal strain. But it can also deform in the perpendicular directions and just like in shear st stresses. So, you can have a shear stress applied in perpendicular to a surface. So, here also you can have something in the same direction or in the perpendicular directions. So, the deformation in the perpendicular directions are basically called shear strains. So, you have uh, normal strains and shear strain. So, it is uh, convenient to uh, you know it is better to visualize this through a diagram like this. So, I think I should spend some time explaining this diagram this figure 4.2. So, what this is is basically it tells you that uh, there is a point here. So, this is the original situation this is before before strain means when this uh, when the object has not uh, undergone strain. So, if it has not undergone strain uh, it is uh, the shape of this uh, so, it is just some piece of this elastic object. So, this square a b c d is just some imaginary piece of an elastic object. So, I am specifically considering say in two dimensions. So, just imagine forget the third dimension for now. Just imagine a two dimensional elastic medium and imagine uh, a small piece of that called uh, the square a b c d. So, the interior of the square a b c d. So, now what we do is we apply some uh, stresses to this. So, in other words we, uh, we take this uh, elastic object which is sitting in this x y plane. See the square a b c d is a small piece of it. So, uh, this entire x y plane is an elastic object. So, imagine you stretch that elastic object. So, what is going to do is that this square will now uh, do uh, uh, this that, that the original square was sitting here it will now not only sit somewhere else because it has been stretched. So, so imagine you stretch it like this. 
So, this square has become stretched. So, this is a stretched. So, stretch square. So, you stretch the square, this point uh, big letter A becomes small letter A. So, in other words, it gets stretched and it shifts there. And then this big letter B shifts to small letter B, uh, big letter D shifts to small letter D and big letter C shifts to small letter C. So, so you see this uh, square which was originally a square has now not only shifted like this but also deformed. So, now we can understand uh, various things like this. Okay. So, this u subscript s is this is this distance is the distance between the uh, the in the is the distance in the x direction between the new a point and the old a point. So, that is u of x that is the definition of u of x. Okay. But then um, the distance between uh, the uh, old b point and the new b point right the distance between the new b point which is small letter b and the old b point in the x direction is uh, clearly x plus dx comma y. So, that means you see b is uh, dx away from a in the x direction you see uh, what is b? b is uh, a plus dx basically. So, in other words uh, point b is sh uh, shifted in the x direction from a. So, so, then this point uh, deforms uh, by a different amount by this much amount. So, this is the deformation uh, of point B, but point B was uh, originally not at x comma y, x comma y A is sitting there. Okay. So, B is sitting at x plus dx comma y. So, now you ask yourself how much does that deform, how much does B deform in the x direction. So, the answer is u x bracket x plus dx comma y not x comma y x comma y would be a how much a would deform. So, similarly in the y direction you can think of uh, the point c which would have deformed uh, by this amount. So, x remains x and by 10 y uh, y becomes uh, y plus dy right because uh, c is exactly on top of uh, a in the y direction. So, the location of uh, the original location of C is capital C which is x comma y plus dy right. So, y plus dy is the original location of uh, x, uh, x comma y plus dy ok. So, now the question is uh, uh, when you so this is before you apply any uh, stresses or strains or whatever it is before the material undergoes strain. Now, after it undergoes strain the uh, material deforms and capital C becomes small c, capital C shifts to small c. Now, the question is uh, what is small c? So, small c is uh, it's both shifts in the x and as well as in the y direction. So, what is uh, what is u of x? u of x is the amount by which a has shifted ok and uh, u x plus d x is the amount by which b has shifted. So, now if you ask yourself what is the difference between that those two that is basically the normal strain in the x direction right. So, you see it, it basically what the normal strain in the x direction it tells you is the amount by which the size of the square has changed. See the original uh, size of the square uh, was length of d x. So, now it has kind of uh, because it has st got stretched the size of the square has now increased in the x direction by this amount ok. So, it has got increased by this amount. So, d u x by d x into d x this much amount. So, original uh, size was d x. So, after stretching the size has increased by this amount. So, that is uh, so this this is this coefficient is basically called the fraction by which the size of the square has increased is called the normal stress in that particular direction in, in this case it is the x direction. 
So, this is as against the shear strain which corresponds to the normal strain uh, indicates the uh, amount by which the size of the uh, imagined uh, shape changes. So, that means if you have a square when you stretch it the size of the square changes, but not only the size of the square changes, the shape of the square also changes. So, it would not remain a square, it is not like the square becomes a bigger square, it could happen, but usually it not only becomes a bigger square when you stretch the material, it will also not remain a square, it will become something like this a trapezoid a parallelogram types. So, you have to understand both means you have to account for both not only the size has changed. So, the size has changed by this amount du by dx into dx that is the amount by which the size of the square has increased. But then we also have to describe the amount by which the shape of the uh, square has changed. So, the to understand the shape of the square what you do is exactly you calculate uh, as epsilon x y for example. So, if you calculate epsilon x y that is uh, uh, basically uh, d u x by d y plus d u y by d x one half of that. So, this is this is basically alpha plus beta. So, this epsilon x y uh, basically is called the shear strain. So, the shear strain is, uh, is uh, so why is this the case? because you see approximately you can uh, you can see what is happening uh, this uh, this distance. So, this amount is approximately this much and this amount is d x. So, this distance this angle is uh, just uh, because the angles are small uh, tan theta equals uh, tan alpha is approximately alpha and what is tan alpha it is this divided by this. Okay. Uh, so, what is this? This is du uh, du y by dx. So, this is du y by dx into dx. Okay. So, uh, so this divided by dx is this angle. So, this tan tan of this angle. This is uh, this divided by dx. So, that is tan of this angle. Sim similarly, here tan of beta is uh, this divided by dy. This much is dy. The square, uh, the side of the square is dy. It's not really square; it's a rectangle, but dy. So uh, the this uh, this angle is uh, basically this divided by tan tan beta is this divided by this, and what is this? It is du uh, x by dy into dy. Okay. So uh, if I add these two and take the average, uh, you get uh, alpha beta by two, basically, right? So, the uh, sum of these two would be alpha plus beta. So, so in other words uh, the shear strain will basically tell you the amount by which the material has changed the shape. See whereas, the normal strain will tell you the amount by which the size of that uh, deformation has increased. So, that means if you imagine as original a rectangle when you stretch the material not only the rectangle will become bigger, but it will not remain a rectangle. So, the amount by which that uh, rectangle will become bigger is called normal strain. The amount by which it uh, changes its shape to something else is called shear strain. So, bottom line is that you have uh, these two concepts. One is called stress, stress is what you apply to the material, but strain is the response, strain is what uh, the uh, deformable body does when you apply stresses. So, now in the next class I am going to tell you uh, exactly how to relate these two concepts. So, we are going to consider what are called linear deformable material where we assume that uh, the material uh, basically uh, responds linearly that means, uh, the amount of strain that the material uh, exhibits is going to be proportional directly proportional to the amount of stress that you apply. So, if you double the stress that you apply the strain also doubles. 
So, those are called linearly deformable material and that is a perfectly good approximation for a vast majority of deformable uh, objects that are of interest to us. Okay, so, uh, so in the next class I will tell you how to relate these two and that is called the stress strain relations and that will uh, be the starting point of our uh, important discussion of uh, elasticity theory. Okay, so, uh, so I hope you will join me for the next class and I am going to stop here, thank you. Mm -hmm.